Hey there, welcome back to Brad's Labs. So today we're going to be looking at skull cups, and I don't actually have a skull cup because it's kind of frowned upon me owning human remains, seeing as how I'm not a museum or a university. But I have 3D printed off the frontal lobe of a human skull. It's shrank down, it's not you know, anatomically accurate for an adult uh, skull. But uh, this video will contain you know, talk about skulls, uh, defleshing, things along those lines. There will be photos of actual skull cups. If you find those things to be kind of disturbing, I do recommend you go check out one of the other videos. They'll be linked over here. And for that, uh, if you like it, give us a like, share, and a subscribe. So as mentioned before, skull cups are kind of found all over the world. And I want to take and go more into depth in some of the sites that we actually have found skull cups. But the earliest evidence of a skull cup that we have actually dates to Goth's Cave, just outside of Somerset, England. And it dates back to the Magdalenian period, about 14,700 BP. And BP is before present. I kind of prefer BP compared to CE or BCE, but that's a story for another day. But the skull itself was found in fragments, and it was found amongst animal bones. But on the skull, there are evidence of percussion, cutting, defleshing, all the fun signs that you would come to associate with a skull cup. But that's not the only place that we have found skull cups. In Europe alone, they're found in Germany, they're found in Spain, they're found in France. So let's focus outside of Europe for just a minute. And one of the places that we actually do find evidence of skull cups is Nampukio, Peru. And we have evidence for skull cups there dating to 400 to 700 CE. And these skull cups have all the hallmarks that we would come to associate with the skull cup. They've got the edges that have been, their signs of percussion, their signs of cutting, their signs of defleshing. And the edges have been polished because, I mean, let's be honest, you don't want to take and cut yourself on your uh, best friend's skull when you're drinking out of it. But that's not the only area that we do find skull cups. Our Australian Aborigines, actually in the 19th century, there's evidence of them using skull cups, but we're going to get into that here in a minute. So we actually have documented sources from people such as Herodotus talking about the Scythians using skull cups. From China with Simus Qian, uh, we've got documents from Vikings from Magnus Olfsson. The list of people talking about skull cups being used is long. And we're going to get more into that here in a minute because there's a lot of problems with those documents. But why would people use skull cups? Well, there's a few different ideas behind why they would use them. One of them is cannibalism. Another one is trophy display. And another one is secondary burial which in my opinion kind of ties into an idea of ancestor worship but let's take it from you know cannibalism cannibalism is pretty self-explanatory it's humans eating human flesh so i'm not going to really go too much in detail into that one but then you get into ideas of trophy display trophy display is the idea of you know war you get into a battle with another group you killed somebody, you take their, their skull and you turn it into a drinking vessel and now you have yourself a fancy cup to show your prowess as a warrior. And then the last one is secondary burial. So secondary burial is exactly what it sounds like. It's the body being buried again, but it's kind of a, got a weird twist to it, so to say. Some cultures, they will leave the body sitting out in the elements for a specified amount of time and then they'll later come back collect the skeletal remains of their loved one and then they'll deposit those remains into a new grave but along the way they may cut the head off uh, or the top or the skull off of their ancestor to take and use as a drinking vessel and that's where i think it gets into an idea of ancestor worship and that's just the way that they would choose to remember their ancestors. For us, it may seem weird. To them, it's completely normal. So as I mentioned before, we have to take sources like Herodotus with a grain of salt. Because he was writing about another civilization that his civilization did not care for. And what's one of the best ways to defame another civilization? 
call them savages, call them cannibals. And that's something that we still see to this day, unfortunately. But the idea behind a skull cup, because we don't see it as something that would be proper, doesn't mean that another group of people don't see it as something that is proper. You know, for somebody that is doing ancestor worship, the idea of, you know, drinking out of the skull or eating the flesh and then drinking out of the skull, it's a way to keep their ancestors' memory alive. For trophy uh, hunting, quote unquote, it's the idea of being able to display your prowess as a warrior. But that is something that we don't look at today as a correct thing to do. But when you think about it, soldiers today still keep trophies from their times in battle. They're not supposed to, but they do. You hear about it on the news occasionally. And just because we deem something as wrong doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just not what our culture does. But that doesn't mean that we should take and automatically lambast another culture because we don't think what they're doing is correct. That's one of the great things about being a human is there are so many of us and so many of us make up what this world actually is. And at the end of the day, calling another group savage because they do take and you know use a skull cup is just completely wrong. But when you think about it, we still see skull cups in a lot of popular culture at, you know, today. In Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, it's not exactly a cup more, it is, more as it is a pouring vessel, but it's still a cup that's being used by what that movie would have you call a savage, a unsophisticated group of people that are doing primitive rituals. There's other sources that you can, you know, find, but we also see it just in like Halloween decorations. You know, this is the time of the year when you go to the store and you see all sorts of dec decorations out and skulls play a very prominent role in our decoration. But that's the difference between hanging a plastic skull and hanging a real human skull is we've decided as a culture that it's culturally acceptable to hang that plastic skull and not the human skull. Now, I'm not saying go out, start finding human skulls and hanging those. Please don't. There's all sorts of other issues that go into that. But that is what we have deemed as our culture, as being acceptable. And we shouldn't automatically just judge other cultures because we don't think it's acceptable from our point of view. So I'd like to thank you for joining us today at this look at Skull Cups. If you do have any questions about Skull Cups, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I'll do my best to answer it, point you in the direction of somebody that can answer it. If you want to do your own research on it, which I highly recommend, when you go to Google, type in Skull Cups Archaeology, because if you just type in Skull Cups, you're going to get Halloween decorations, and there's plenty of them, but none of them are what we were talking about today. And other than that, uh, you can join us on Discord. We do have an active community on Discord, mostly talking about coins right now, but maybe we can get some more uh, conversations in there. Uh, I'd like to thank the Patreons for supporting us. It does help make all of this possible. We charge $1 and you get a lot of extra content. Um, I'm sure it'll be on screen somewhere right now. But yeah, if you like the video, please leave a like, share, subscribe, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.